grandmother, Elizabeth Glasgow, who ran a restaurant on 6th Street. Yes. Um, <clears throat> can, can you tell me what her what, what her slave owner's name was? Was it? She didn't know her scepter. It wasn't anywhere in the world I could have known. Oh, I see. No. So she was seven years old when they released her. I know, but I. But how did, she, how did she get the name Glasgow? Was that her married name? That was her husband's name. She married an old Jack Leg preacher in Austin, Texas, named Reverend Glasgow. I see. Um, so she didn't know her name before she married Glasgow. If she did, I don't know I it. See. I don't say she didn't know it, but I didn't know it because I never asked her and she never told me. Yeah. What was Glasgow's first name? Do you remember? I never saw him. I knew him. Yeah. Okay. He left before I was even born. Uh-huh. Do you have any idea when she came to Austin? When she came where? When she came to Austin? I couldn't tell you that because as far as I know, she's been there all her life. Oh, I thought you told me that she lived on a plantation out... She did when she was a girl. Uh-huh. But she was released when she was seven for emancipation. Right. And she did tell me that uh, she cooked there in Austin for years at the Deaf and Dumb uh, School. Uh -huh. And how the ladies knew she had so she had 11 children would tell her she could have all that was left to take home to her children. Oh, I see. So your grandmother... And she said that was how she reared her children was by them giving her the food that was left every day where she cooked. Uh -huh. Your grandmother had the 11 children. Yes. Uh -huh. I'm keeping up with you, taking some notes, so I'm going to pause every now and then. Okay. Um, tell me when she started running this restaurant. Well, when I can remember she was in the restaurant business, so I really couldn't tell you that. I don't know. When, when do you... Uh, remember that she was running the restaurant? Well, she was doing it way before my mother died because my mother died when I was seven and that's when I came to live with her in the restaurant. Uh -huh. But until then, every Sunday, when we'd get out of Sunday school and church, we'd go down to the restaurant and eat dinner. Oh, you were? Well, about when would this be? About well, I was seven, eight, and nine, and I'm 83, so you know how many hundred uh -huh. years ago that was. <laughs> well, it wasn't that many hundred years ago. So that was about 1910 then. So that's when you all would go down to the restaurant af uh -huh. uh, after church on Sundays. Well, about how long did she run that restaurant? Do you have any idea? Let's see. She ran that restaurant until I went to uh, Mary Allen Seminary. And when was that? You know, at that time, dates didn't mean a thing to me. I know. About how old were you? I was about 12 then. Okay. Uh, so you were born in 1903, so that place is at about... I was born 1902. 1902. Yeah, so I'll be in the in July, Woo. 22nd. Okay, so that means she ran that restaurant until about 1914. I imagine so. Uh huh. Was that the only restaurant she ran? Well, she had two or three, but they were all on Sixth Street. Uh huh. Did she have them at the same time or at different times? No, she when she she was renting the property where she had them. Uh huh. And when the man would want his property for something else, then Mama would rent another place and we'd move. Uh huh. Well, she had rooms upstairs, so we always had rooms upstairs at that time, the black baseball players that would come to Austin couldn't stand none of the white hotels. Uh -huh. So she always had rooms upstairs where they could stay. Uh -huh. So you all, w you all would stay upstairs and then sometimes when the black baseball players would come you'd rent... We always stayed upstairs uh -huh. that's where all the bedrooms were. Uh -huh. uh, I had about 12 or 15 rooms up there. Really? Do you remember which uh, which restaurant that was, where the 12 or 15 rooms were? Well, every, each one she had had rooms. Uh-huh. But I can't remember which one that was. Which ones? Do you, uh, does the name of the restaurant K&P 
ring a bell to you? The what? Does the name of the restaurant, K and P restaurant, ring a bell to you? K and P. K is in um, the woman's name, and P is in Papa. K no, and P. Okay. Well, she lists the name of her restaurant as the K and P restaurant one year in the Austin City Directory, uh -huh. and I was wondering if you remembered that name. No, I don't. Do you remember the names of any of her other restaurants? Well, I didn't know they had names. I just thought they were restaurants. Uh-huh. So she just went by Elizabeth Glasgow's restaurant. Well, most of them knew her by Mrs. Glasgow's restaurant. Uh-huh. Okay. Because everybody in the block, there were a lot of retail stores in the block. Uh-huh. Clothing stores, they all had that dinner there, but if they were busy, they couldn't come and eat. My uncle used to, I had an uncle a little older than I was and an aunt. And they would carry the trays of food to the different stores. Oh, really? So to the proprietors of the stores, she was yeah. serving them? Yeah, because there was a colored drugstore down below us, Dr. Jennings. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Do you remember Dr. Jennings? I sure do, because he had a picture show and he used to let me in every Saturday free. Really? What kind of picture shows did you see there? Oh, we'd see Clara Bow and uh, most of the actresses and actors that were during then had been dead. Uh -huh. and not then I see it one still living 110 like me. <laughs> You're not 110, Miss West. I feel it. <laughs> Just getting over having an artificial knee put in. Uh oh. Um, do you remember any other actresses besides Clara Bow? Now, these were picture shows, right? Yeah, they were picture shows. Did you ever well, see... Well, they had a lot of them with, uh, had more comedy scenes for kids. Uh-huh. But was this picture show Fatty just... Fatty Arbuckle. Who? Fatty Arbuckle. Fatty Arbuckle? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, this picture show wasn't just for children, was it? No, it was for anybody. Uh-huh. Were the shows only daytime shows, or did they have shows at night? Well, he had them at night, but I never went at night because I didn't have anybody to go with. Uh -huh. So after I'd get my work done in the afternoon, Mom would let me go. But I had to be home before dark. Uh huh. Because we were just about three doors from the city show. Uh huh. Okay, so uh, was her restaurant upstairs or downstairs? The restaurant was downstairs. The rooms were upstairs. Uh huh where you all lived. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, I never will forget those rooms because they didn't have electric lights then. We had gas lights in the, in the cafe. Oh, really? Because a man used to come every evening and light them. Uh huh. But upstairs we had lamps and I'd have to clean all those lamp chimneys and fill those lamps either before I went to school or when I first got home. Uh huh. So those were kerosene lamps upstairs? Yes. Uh-huh. So you, your job was to clean up the and lamps? They didn't have indoor toilets then. We had the toilets that was in the yard. In the yard? Where? Sitting out in the back. I'll be darned. And what about the restaurant? Was the toilet outside for the restaurant? Well, you didn't have one for the restaurant. You used the one out there in the back or you didn't use one. Uh -huh. <laughs> And the people upstairs, I put, we had slop jars for all their rooms. Uh-huh. And that's one thing I had to do every morning before I went to school was into the slop jars and rinse them out. Uh-huh. And put them to air up under the steps until uh -huh. I'd come home from school. Then I'd have to put them back in the room. Uh-huh. Did your grandmother keep you pretty busy then helping her? Well, she didn't have to. I was a smart little girl. I wanted to. You wanted to work, huh? Well, I love to cook it. She would let me cut, cut the roast up after school to uh -huh. make hash for dinner. Uh -huh. she, she taught me how to make the chili, and I'd make the chili every year. Uh -huh. And I'd go to the uh, dairy and get a gallon of buttermilk and a gallon of sweet milk every evening when I'd come home. Uh -huh. Oh, I had things I had to do. I didn't have time to run and play like most kids. That's real interesting, Miss West. Um, tell me more about Dr. Jennings. What do you remember about him? What was he like? He was 
a nice old fella. He lived upstairs over his drugstore. Uh -huh. And he had a young fella in there with him who filled prescriptions, Dr. Delashwa. Uh -huh. He had a beautiful home there right on the corner of Fort Street with that. That's Rosewood, isn't it? I believe it was. Uh-huh. Um, so Dr. Delashwa was already a doctor when he came to work for, for Dr. Dr. Jennings? Dr. Jennings, yeah. Uh-huh. About when did he come to work for Jennings, do you remember? I couldn't tell you that. I don't know. Uh-huh. Well, I knew him. He was there. Uh-huh. Um, what was Mr. Jennings like besides being a nice old fellow? Did he have a family? No, he didn't have a wife or a family or anything that I knew of. Uh-huh. Was, was he a medical doctor? No, he just had a drugstore. Uh-huh. And we could come out of the kitchen and go in there and get Hello? 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 Uh huh. I'm sorry, the telephone just went off. No, I thought maybe you had to hang up or something. No, ma'am, it just faded away. Your voice started disappearing and I started saying hello. I'm sorry. Um, so, Dr. Jennings. Uh, was a druggist, is that right? Yes, he had a drugstore. Uh-huh. Uh, was there anything to do in that drugstore besides buying sundries and drugs? Not that I know of. Could he you... had a fountain up to the front where we go in there and get ice cream. Uh-huh. Get banana splits and things. Uh-huh. But, uh, he didn't serve food or anything, sandwiches and things like they do now. Uh huh. Who did anybody hang out at the drugstore? No. Did the youngsters? Children hang... didn't hang out then like they do now. They had to work. Uh huh. We didn't have time. When we went home in the afternoons, kids had to. They teach their at school. I got to go and wash all our windows this evening. Uh huh. Children didn't have chance to run the street and get in dope and stuff like they do now. Uh huh. And I think that's one reason. So many of them get in trouble. They don't have anything to do. Yeah, I know. Well, um, who patronized Dr. Jennings' place? Colored white everybody. Uh-huh. Well, was it your impression that he ran a, a, a pretty profitable business? He must have. He bought the building. His, build, his place was in. Uh-huh. Was that unusual that a black man could buy the building? I guess so, because he was about the only... Well, there was another pool hole there. Uh-huh. There was a black man on that. What, what was that? Was that Julius Wright? Yes. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. And did Mr. Wright own his building? As far as I know, he did. Uh-huh. But it was pretty unusual that those two men owned their building? Yeah, because, see, those that was some of the most expensive property. Because it was on 6th Street, which at that time was one of the... You come right on from Congress Avenue to that, and that was a main thoroughfare. Uh-huh. All the parades and things used to come down it. Uh-huh. What uh, parades do you remember? Ringling Brothers, and they had a, a show used to come there called Wild West. That they was... put some horses and little Shetland ponies and things in a ring and let the children ride them. Uh-huh. So the Wild West show was part of the Ringling Brothers Parade? No, it was a different show. Oh, I see. Wild West was a show and Ringling Brothers was a show. Uh-huh. And they all, they both went down 6th Street, is that right? The parades did. They had parades then, but they eventually cut them out. They said there was heavy wagons and the animals were ruining the street, so... Oh, really? That's when they cut out all the, uh, the parades. Uh-huh. Do you remember some parades that went down 6th Street? Yeah, I just told you, Ringland Brothers and the Wild West Show. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and they would go down Congress Avenue, too? They would go down to the River Bridge. Uh-huh. Because the, the showground was down there. Uh-huh. By the River Bridge, and they'd go back down there. Uh-huh. That's uh -huh. where the kids would all go carry water for the elephants and sing and get free tickets to boys, mostly if the girls didn't uh -huh. that too much. Uh -huh. Well, do you recall that there were very many black entrepreneurs on 6th Street at this time? Well, nearly every business on 6th Street was black. Why is that? There was a saloon there and there was a pool hall. Uh -huh. well, well, we had a lot of blacks in Austin. Uh -huh. 
And of course, they couldn't go in the white places. Uh-huh. So, uh... Who ran the saloon? Do you remember? I think his name was Wright. So Wright ran both Julius the... Julius Wright, I believe. Uh-huh. Was. So Julius Wright ran both the saloon and the pool hall. Is that what you're saying? I don't remember. Uh-huh. <laughs> I know he ran the, the, uh, the, the, uh, saloon. Uh-huh. Does the name Maroney ring a bell? Who? Maroney? Yes, I knew Mr. Maroney. Uh-huh. What he did he... He was a real life fellow. Oh, he was? Mm-hmm. Did he ever do anything for you? No. Uh-huh. Why do you think he was so nice? Well, by us being close then, they never bothered us. And if they'd see anything they thought was wrong over there, they'd come to see about it because they knew Mama was a, you know, a widow. Uh-huh. So Mr. Maroney sort of protected her when he felt like she needed it? Yeah, if he'd see some of the drunks or something coming in to eat. Uh-huh. He'd tell them, Susie, I want you to get out of here now. Uh-huh. If you don't, Alberta, you come up to the saloon and call me and I'll put them out. Uh-huh. So we never had any trouble because they knew he was sort of a guardian for us. Uh-huh. That was nice. Mm-hmm. What other nice things can you think that Mr. think of that Mr. Maroney did for you all? That's about the only thing I can think of. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, did, was it your impression that Dr. Jennings uh, did a lot for Dr. Delashwa? He did, and I think he willed in that home that he had there. You think Mr. And he had the drugstore after Dr. Jennings died. Uh-huh. You think that uh, Jennings willed him the, that Delashwa's home? Well, I hear he did. He left him all that. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> the home and the drugstore, too, till he closed it. Uh-huh. Well, I'll be darned. So that was sort of common knowledge at that time? As far as I know, it was. Uh-huh. Um, well, your grandmother never went to school, is that right? Yes, I told you that when I was grown, I bought her a house across from Anderson High School. Uh-huh. And they started night school. Uh-huh. And Mama went to night school every night and learned to write. Uh-huh. And to read writing, because up until that time, she only could read print. Uh-huh. Uh, about how, how old were you at this time? Oh, I was grown and married living in Houston. I must have been about 22 or 23. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, when did your grandmother die? She died in 1950. 1950. Did she die in Austin? Couldn't get out of there. I tried to get bring up here with me. Uh-huh. My husband then drove that. We drove down there twice to try to get her to come in the car because she wouldn't get on the train. Uh-huh. And I knew she wouldn't get in a plane. Uh-huh. But she wouldn't need it. She, she would love Austin. Couldn't get out of it. What did she die of? I imagine old age because she hadn't been sick. Uh-huh. Was she buried here? Yes, yeah, she's buried there. Where? At Oakwood? That was the only cemetery they had there when I was there, so it couldn't have been any place else. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, she yeah. died June the 8th, 1950 at 1 p.m. June the 8th, 1950. Was your grandmother a big church member, Ms. West? Well, she couldn't go to church and run the cafe. Uh-huh. But after she closed the cafe, she did. And we had to go to Sunday school and stay to church and go back to BYPU and choir uh-huh. practice and everything else. Was she a member of Ebenezer Baptist? Yeah, we all were. Uh-huh. Um, I didn't join the Methodist church until I left Houston, I mean left Austin and moved to Houston. Uh-huh. Well, uh, who mostly ate in your grandmother's restaurant? What type of uh, clientele did she serve? Well, she served all the blacks there practically ate there. Uh-huh. There were a lot of them who drove trucks with different concerns. They'd come down and eat. Uh-huh. 
Uh-huh. And all the businesses around there had meals there. Uh-huh. There was some Jews had a second-hand store, two doors they ate there every day. Uh-huh. Um, so mostly the business people who were downtown ate there, is that right? Well, most of the blacks that would, and on Saturday, that was a big day because all the country people would come from Brenham and uh-huh. Round Rock and all the little places around there. Uh-huh. What were they coming in for on Saturday? Well, they'd come in to buy their groceries because most of those little places, Round Rock and places, they didn't have stores and things. Uh-huh. So they'd come to Austin on Saturday and get their groceries. Uh-huh. And I never forget most of them would come in. Mama had a, a sold a three pan sausage and two biscuits for 15 cents. Mm. And they'd come in and nearly every one of them, you could almost tell they were country because they'd say, give me all the sausage. <laughs> and sausage and biscuits. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, is it your impression then that your mama did well in her restaurant? Yes, she could pay the rent. Uh-huh. Sent me to school. I went off to school and always wore nice clothes. Uh-huh. Had money to spend. So. Uh-huh. As I said, I went to high school, free school, but one year in my life. Uh-huh. And that was at Anderson High, right? Yeah, the year I graduated in 1921. Um, who did your your grandmother rent the building from? Do you remember? Oh, I don't know who it was. Uh-huh. Okay. Um, let me look back. You've given me some good information, Miss West. Uh, why did your grandmother choose to set up her restaurant on 6th Street? Well, that was the most prosperous place. That was a place where she'd get the most patronage. Uh-huh. And eventually, another colored lady opened one right down on the next corner. Who was that? I can't think her name was Miss Kitty something. Uh Uh-huh. Miss Kitty Pollard? I believe that was it, but she never had the, uh, as as much of a crowd as we did till Mama closed. But, see, my grandmother, one one day, there was a circus in town, and the cafe was full. Uh Uh-huh. And I was frying the orders of fish and things for her. And uh, I saw her reach down and scratch her leg, and after a while, I looked, she was in a pool of blood. What happened? I said, Mama, you're bleeding. And she looked, she had scratched this place on her leg, and it was a broken blood vessel. I'll be darned. So we had to send her to the hospital, and that's when we closed the cafe because she couldn't stand on her legs any longer. Oh, no. That. Well, uh, how old were you then, about? Oh, I was grown. I was about, I guess I was about, I had finished high school. Uh Uh-huh. So, um, you would have been about 18 or 20 years old? Between that, yes. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. Well, what did she do after that cafe closed? I took care of her until she died. Uh Uh-huh. Well, that was another 30 years then. Yes, I bought the home she lived in. I sent her money and I would come every year to see and buy all the wood she'd need for the winter since she wouldn't let me put gas stoves in the old house. Uh-huh. I'd come home and buy two cords of wood and I'd have one cut up into stove wood and I'd get some little kids around there to help me pile it on the back porch so she could get to it without coming out in the yard. That was nice. And I'd buy some and have cutting chunks for the little, um, used to have some little old stoves. You put a little paper in them, they'd almost jump off the floor. Uh-huh. <laughs> Goodness. Well, uh, was it your impression that Dr. Jennings was a prosperous person? As far as I know, he was. Uh-huh. Uh, was he well-liked? Was he respected? Oh, yes, I think so. Uh-huh. Who everybody, were his friends? Everybody liked Dr. Jennings as far as I knew. Uh-huh. Uh, do you know who his friends were? No, I didn't know he had any except the, the people downtown there because he didn't visit anybody. Oh, why not? You can't run a business and go visit it. Uh-huh. uh-huh. So he was a pretty busy man. Yes, he opened every morning. And as I told you, he owned the picture show next door. Uh-huh. I don't know if he owned that building or not, but I know he owned the picture show because we all used to go there all the time. Uh-huh. Well, do you... Roy, Roy, just all the old uh, movie stars that were... 
I've seen it spelled a number of different ways. I, well, I've, that's the way we spelled it, and that's uh -huh. the way she spelled it. Uh -huh. Well, um, so she married this Reverend Glasgow in Austin, is that right? Yes. What was his first name? Do you remember? I don't know, oh, honey. You, you did, I've asked you that. he wasn't it. there when I came along. Okay. He's been gone before I was born. Uh -huh. Well, did your grandmother raise you and some brothers and sisters, or just you? It, it, it wasn't the two of us in the family, my brother and I. Uh-huh. Was he John? No, his name was Henry Harris. Henry Harris. Okay. John Glasgow was her one of her sons. Oh, I see. Of course, she had a grandchild named John, too. Uh-huh. Well, I noticed that in the city directory, a John was living with her for a while, and I was wondering. Well, that was, I guess, before I was, before I was born. Uh-huh. Because he was married with a family of his own. Um, so you said that your grandmother did a lot better in her restaurant than Kitty Pollard did. She surely did. Why do you suppose she did? Well, we've been there longer and so many more people knew us. Uh-huh. They tell Mama that she had the best food. I don't know about that because I never ate it, Miss Kitty. Uh-huh. But we never lost any customers to her. Uh-huh. Do you remember that there were a lot of restaurants for black folks at this time? No, those were the only two in Austin. Uh huh. Do you remember who your grandmother's friends were here? Well, you know, when my grandmother moved in the house, I was living here. Uh -huh. And I don't know of her friends, but I know she had a large family. Uh huh. And the family members were always there. Well, what about when she was running the restaurant? Do you remember who her friends were then? She didn't have time to socialize. When she got up there in the morning and prepared breakfast and made biscuits every morning, cooked grits and hash or whatever she was cooking, uh -huh. she didn't have time. People didn't have time to socialize. In fact, they did. Uh-huh. Well, how many hours a day did she work? Well, she'd have breakfast in the morning, then... At what she time? served uh, dinner at 12 o'clock. Uh-huh, so she just served meals. When I'd come home in the afternoon, God help her with, get, with supper, they called it. Uh-huh. Well, was she open between breakfast and dinner and dinner and she supper? She was open all day long. Uh -huh. We could get short orders in between the meals. Uh-huh. And after I got large enough, I cooked all the short orders. Somebody come in order some fish. Uh-huh. Want a bowl of chili or something like that, a steak or whatever. Uh-huh. Well, uh, did she employ black waitresses in the restaurant? We had family working there. They couldn't hire anybody. We had family. We did hire. Yeah, I've got a picture of the restaurant with one black girl she had hired there. Uh -huh. But my uncle, we called him Buddy. He was my mother's youngest brother. He never did marry. He lived there till he, till, um, he left. Uh-huh. Tell me about this picture you have of the restaurant. What does it show in the restaurant? It shows the, uh, they had those old-timey round tables, and, and my uncle was in there with holding up a tree like he was bringing food in, and this lady who was a waitress, uh -huh. she was in there with an apron on, but I didn't know her. Uh -huh. But when I was there, I had my mother's youngest sister was there. She was about 18 when I was seven and eight, and she waited table. Uh-huh. Then when I got big enough, I waited table. Uh-huh. So it really was sort of a family operation. It was a family operation. Uh-huh. You told me earlier that you have your family Bible with your grandmother's uh, death date in it. Is that right? That's what I was looking at to tell you when she died, because I didn't exactly remember. Uh -huh. Do you have any other pictures of your grandmother? No. I had one of her, somebody, somebody took her in the grave, I mean, in the casket, which I don't particularly like. No. But uh, somebody gave it to me. Uh -huh. I had some beautiful pictures there, but you know, when I moved here, I left them there. Oh, right. And when they died, see, I have to come home. By the time I'd get home, everything I thought I was going to find and get was gone. Uh -huh. The ants and things were all still living. I don't think but two of them had died before Mama. Goodness. Well, 
So the only picture you have of her then, or the only picture you have of her restaurant, is one of the interior of the restaurant. Is that right? Yes. And you don't, you can't think of any photographs you have of her. No, I don't have any of Mom except in the casket. Uh huh. I had to, um, at that time, people had big pictures in frames. Uh huh. And I had one of my mother and my brother and I and one of my grandmother and the family and all. But you know, as I say, when I came home for the funeral, when I got home from Houston, all the pictures had been divided between the my children. I guess I never did get it. Uh -huh. Well, do you know of any family members who might have pictures of her, Ms. West? They're all dead, honey. Oh. The reason I'm asking about these pictures is... Now, I've got some cousins still living, but now... Would they be likely to have pictures of her? I really don't know. No, they never lived with my grandmother. Anybody here in Austin that you know of? Yeah, I don't know. Do you know Annie Thelma? She used to be Ramey, but she married somebody, and I don't even know Annie Thelma's name. They don't ever write me, and I don't ever write them. Uh-huh. Well, the reason I'm asking about the... The only person I correspond there with is Emma Van Dyke, and she's the... She's not Van Dyke now, she's somebody else. Uh-huh. Well, you know, this is going to be an exhibit, and we'd really like to see if we could find any pictures of Miss Glasgow. Um, I'd love to be able to get a copy... Well, my cousin, she lives in Houston now, Hallie Bell Thomas. Uh-huh. Her mother took most of the pictures. Hallie Bell Thomas? Mm -hmm. Is that how she's listed in the phone book? Is Hallie Bell Thomas? I don't know. She doesn't live by herself. She lives with her cousins there, who are the Madisons. Uh -huh. Do you know what street? I don't know. Her mother, Aunt Fanny, had all the pictures because she's the one that got them. Uh -huh. But her mother died about, uh, I guess, about eight years ago, and so she moved to Houston with her cousins on her father's side, the Madison. Mm -hmm. Her father taught manual training there at the high school for years and years and years. Uh, Ms. West, do you think there's a possibility that I could somehow get that photograph copied that you have show, that shows the round tables with your uncle holding the tray? If I could find a place in Honey, it. I've got about 50 Kodak books with Woo. pictures in it. Uh-huh. The first time I have time, I'll go to it and find it. And if I can find it and take it to one of the better shops here and see if I can have one made from it. All right. Because it's old and I'm sure it's faded. I haven't seen it in years. Well, I'd be happy to pay for that copy, to have that copy made. I would expect to do that. But um, now, like today, I went to my ceramic class. And then in the evenings when I come home, I go to the spa and take exercise and swim. Oh, good for you. And because I haven't done much of it here lately because my knee hasn't got completely well yet. Uh-huh. But uh, I don't stay home that much. But the first day I can stay here all day, I'm going to go through those things and see if I can find that and see if I can have one made. All right, give me your address. It's 124. Uh-huh. West 29th Street. Okay. And, and my name, of course, is Alberta West. Okay. Um, and it's Ogden, Utah, 84401. Okay. I'll send you a letter with my name and everything in it. Um, maybe I can find the name of a photography place there and just call them and ask them to, to Do make... Do you know Emma? She had a secretarial school there. Emma who? Can't think of what Emma's name is since she married. No, I don't know her. Um, but tell me what you don't you know anybody there, a black person who had a secretarial school there. Um, no, I don't. It wasn't Brown. I've got some old old address books, and I'll have it in there. Uh huh. Well, it, it, do you think she might have some photographs or or something? Why do you mention Emma? Well, I knew she could tell you a lot of things that I don't know, because oh. she's been there all the time I was gone. Uh-huh. And you don't remember her last name? Well, she married since I've been gone. Uh-huh. However, I've had a Christmas card from her once or twice, so that's the reason I know I have her address. And 
one of my old books. Well, tell me what you thought of Dr. Shelton. I thought she was a good dentist. She was the only one we could go to, so we didn't have anybody to compare her with. Uh -huh. Was she gentle? Yes, she was. Uh -huh. Did she seem to like children? I'm sure she did, because she did all the children's teeth that had cavities, and at that time, many of them did, because people hadn't learned then not to give children all the sweets and things that they let them have now. Uh-huh. Okay, let's see if I can think of any more questions. You're a good source for me, Ms. West. Well, I'm sorry I can't remember dates and things. Oh, well, I can figure those dates out if you can just tell me approximately how old you were, then I can... All right, now I want to go back to this bl these black baseball players who, who were coming yeah, in. Yeah, they had a, I can uh, never forget they had San Antonio's black team was a, I think they were called the uh, Senators. They had a black team used to come from Houston. Uh-huh. Guess what they were called, something. Uh-huh. And they came in to play each other here in, in Austin, huh? Did Austin? Yeah, Austin had a baseball team. Was it black? Called the Black Senators, yeah. Oh, uh, I thought that was San Antonio. Well, maybe it was. I don't know. Uh -huh. But I know they had ball games. Uh huh. So these visiting teams would come in to play the Austin team. Yeah. Was that a real popular event for Black? Well, you see, we were close to San Antonio. We just eighty miles from San Antonio. Right. Well, San Antonio's teams would come and play here in Austin. Would come to Austin and play too. Uh huh. Well, who, what other types of visiting people would stay at your, in your grandmother's rooms besides the baseball players? None that I know of. See, Austin went back to Austin. See, this is the railroad town, and everybody comes in here with cooks and, and um, waiters and things off the railroad. Uh -huh. But Austin wasn't the railroad town, so uh -huh. I didn't know. I never heard of all this railroad until I came out here. Yeah. Okay. Well, Ms. West, you've given me a whole lot of information. I really appreciate your taking the time to talk to me. I'm gonna and after I get your address out, I'll, I'll send you my cousin's name. Okay, good. And Is maybe you can get in touch with them. They know more than I do because they've never left there. I know a, a man, I met a man the other day named John, John Hargis. Does that name ring a bell to you? No, I've never known. My, my folk were named John Glasgow. Okay. Well, this, this man told me about you, and it, it seemed to me that he was a relative. I mean, you know, he told me he was a relative of Elizabeth Glasgow's, and he told Maybe me... Maybe he was, honey. He told me about you. That's how I got your name. Mm -hmm. um, let me see if I can think of any other questions, Ms. West. Would it be all right with you if I think of more questions? Can I call you back? Not yeah. tonight, but some other time? Yeah. Did you ever know uh, Louise Lott that was head of the American Legion there? No, Louise Lott? I mean the American Woodman. Oh, no, I didn't. Didn't you? Because she had a daughter there, Irene, that had a beauty parlor that I know she'd know a lot. Uh-huh. Where was Irene's beauty parlor? I don't know, honey. They uh -huh. didn't have that when I was there. They were little big kids. Uh-huh. And her name was Louise Lott? Yeah, she's dead now. Uh -huh. She and I were first cousins. She was just... A few months older than I was. Do you remember a man named Pinkney Williams? Pinkney Williams? Uh huh. Pinkney Williams? I don't know. No? Okay. See, I haven't lived in Austin since 1921. Yeah, I know. I'm just. Uh, uh, what did you think of Dr. Delashwa? Well, as far as I knew, he was a very nice person. Uh -huh. He married after I left there. When I went back, I met him and his, met his wife. Uh huh. But he wasn't married when I was there. Why did he uh, give up the drug the drugstore? I guess maybe he got tired of fooling with it. Uh huh. Then after you wield a home and business, you make so much money, you feel like you're rich. Uh huh. You retire, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Okay. Um. Who else can I ask you about now? Do you remember a barber named Thomas Perry? No. I left Austin in 21. Uh-huh. Do you remember a tailor named B.L. Joyce? 
Professor Josh used to teach school there. Mm -hmm. okay. But I didn't know him. You see, my my sister lived there after I moved out here. Mm -hmm. Her husband was over the, um, over what, what, what is it, something they had there during the war. And they moved to Austin. She was in Austin just last week. She wrote and told me that one of their best friends died there. Oh, really? Well, how long was she in Austin? Well, she went to the University of, of um, our band, graduated. Uh-huh. Do you think I should call her? Would she know about these no, early people? No, she lives in Seattle. Oh. Would, she wouldn't know about these early people? No, she wouldn't know about them because she, she was brought up in Dallas. Uh-huh. I see. And when, they, when she, she moved there, all those people were practically dead. What do you remember about Mr. Julius C. Wright? I remember he was a little old man, and he used to come in and eat every day. Uh-huh. He was a real sporty fella. Oh, really? Uh, how do you mean he was real sporty? Well, he dressed extremely nice. Uh-huh. Oh, Lord, somebody at my front door. It's just a ring. Well, I'll let you go, Miss West. Okay. I might call you back. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.